anytime somebody in the world gives you money, they want something back for that money. If you have an hour requirement, the faster you can get all your hours knocked out, the faster you're going to be at the major. The spoils go to the victor. Most pilots don't understand what career opportunities are available in the world of aviation. They're making career decisions based on advice from friends or posts on internet forums. Meaning they are taking huge risks with their livelihood without having all the details. This podcast was created to help you understand the aviation industry so you can find your dream job. Let's get ready for pushback. Here's your host and my dad, Nick Fialka. Hey, pilot, don't forget, on March 8th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be doing a live webinar with the director of hiring at United Airlines. You know him, Justin Ritter. We will be answering all of your questions live, so don't forget to sign up. All of the details are in the show notes, and the hyperlink is there. Sign up, log in, and ask your question to Justin Ritter. I'll see you March 8th. 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, pilot. Welcome to another solo episode. I'm Nick Fialka, and you have found Ready for Pushback. I'm so stoked that you're here. It's been a good day for me, and we have spent the time just having a couple days off. I've been flying a lot. I'm on reserve this month, and I had a couple days off. I've been putting off recording (laughs) And here we are. So I have been thinking a lot about what to talk about. And I am very, very thankful for all of you that send me emails. There's so many emails all the time. And I just can't even tell you. Your emails help me figure out what to talk about on my solo shows. And this one, we're going to talk about the flow. What's the flow? Flow is that lady from the insurance commercial. The flow is also something really important that I think you should know about. And first, I'm going to talk about generally what life is like in an airline to become from kind of I'm interested in being a pilot to I'm going to work at a regional to I'm going to work at a major, right? So if you think about that, the whole lifespan from I want to be a pilot to I'm at a regional to I'm at a major, that is a general idea that we have been using in aviation for quite some time. We're in this weird spot of this time, this period in history where we have lots of pilots and lots of need from the airlines. And so there is a shortage and this sucking sound coming from the top. And so the idea of the flow has kind of taken a backseat. Everybody kind of wants to beat the flow. So I'm going to talk about that how to beat the flow. But I am also going to talk about the whole basic idea because mark my words, we will soon be back to this entire process where it takes years to get to a major airline. Mark my words. And you're going to come back and you're going to open up the holy grail of the Ready for Pushback podcast and come across this episode and dust it off and listen to it. And you're going to be like, man, Nick was right. Nick was right. And so I'm going to talk in generalities And I'm going to basically talk about how the program worked at the regional that I was in, because they all similar, very, very similar, because they're all pretty good ideas. And so everybody wants to copy everybody else. So how does it go? Well, it starts off at the beginning when you are going to flight school, whether you go to some for you college or some place to that's a puppy mill to get your flying hours or part 61, 141, whatever, whatever your basic idea of flying to get your, to get your original hours, you can join a cadet program with that company. You can get awarded. It could be a conditional job offer. It could be an opportunity to interview Uh, but you become a cadet for an airline. You choose that one that is the one that you like the most, that offers you the best opportunities, and you choose that one, and you kind of marry up to it. And as a cadet, you go through flight training, and they probably give you some kind of money. Maybe they give you some scholarships. Maybe they just give you a chunk of money that you can do with what you want. But I'll tell you this. Anytime somebody in the world gives you money, They want something back for that money. 
it's not because they're really great guys. It's because they have something in mind. And you can guess what the, this regional will have in mind. They want your pound of flesh. They want your butt in a seat flying jets so they can make some money. And there is some kind of periodicity attached to that, some kind of requirement, maybe a couple of years, maybe some hours, maybe whatever. But when you enter into a cadet agreement, listen, if I'm talking to you and you're listening about a cadet agreement, you might be 16, 17 years old. You are going to be asked to sign a contract and you need to be aware what this contract says. It's worthwhile for you to find an attorney that you can speak to that can help you understand the contract and the uh, possible, the good parts for you and the bad parts for you, the possible threats. If you break this contract, what you're obligated for. And you need to be real clear on that. They're all written differently. It matters what state that it's written in. It matters where you work. All of these things matter. And so you should check into it and read it and have pay somebody to read it. If your parents are already paying for flight school, have them give you a couple extra bucks to pay for a lawyer to understand this contract because it's important. So the cadet program, it helps you benefit because you have a clear path to, usually it's to the major, right? You go, you become a cadet, you go through the cadet process, you get enough hours, you go to the regional, you spend enough time there and you eventually end up in the major. So you become a cadet, you get this pathway going and you can eventually make it to the major. And while you're doing that, you're building time, you're building flight experience, you're getting a certain amount of hours. Maybe you're going to a part 141 school, which you should look that up to see what a 141 school is. And maybe you'll be able to qualify for a restricted ATP certificate. If so, you can start at significantly less hours, like 750 instead of 1500 to get your ATP. You can get a restricted ATP or you can get a regular ATP. Depending on how you do your flight training, that determines how you get your ATP and whether or not you can start early at the regional airline. And that's a really good thing. Once you have, you know, you've got your commercial, you end up be, probably being a CFI, you get your ATP, all those things, and you're done. You've got your enough hours to get your restricted ATP. You will start at a given time at the regional airline. You'll get into class, you'll be awarded a seniority number, and you will go through training. You'll pick one of a handful of aircraft. It's probably going to be a CRJ, maybe a 200, maybe a 700, maybe a 900, or an Embraer, maybe a 145, maybe a 175, there's a couple other smaller aircraft, but that's mainly what the regionals fly. And they're usually less than 75 seats because of things I don't want to even want to get into. But you've got these smaller aircraft, you go through flight training. At the end of that flight training, you're going to get type rated and you are going to get a type rating in your Embraer 175 and you'll establish with your ATP or your restricted ATP at that time. If you are restricted ATP, once you hit 1,500 hours, you go back and you can have a FISDO or whoever, a DPE or somebody in the know that has all the requirements with the FAA. They can pull your information and upgrade you to the full ATP. So you take that restriction off. It's a great thing. So here you are and you are now a first officer. Now that you're a first officer in this airline, you are probably going to start off on reserve. You've got probably a 1,000 other first officers that are ahead of you, maybe there's more than a thousand, and you're just at the bottom bottom kid on the list. As time marches on slowly, you start getting more experience, you get a little bit more flying, and then you are looking at your next goal. Your next goal is a thousand hours of first officer time in this airline. It's a part 121 airline, and you're looking at your thousand hours. You are trying to get enough hours to jump over to the captain's seat. Back in the day, that was just the FAA requirement. Now it's kind of the like, hey, you finally got it. Now you can be a captain. Back in the day, it was, hey, I have my thousand hours. Now I have to wait for my until I'm senior enough to become a captain. But there's such a vacuum going on right now. You don't really have to worry about that. And you can put in a bid 
to become a captain at the airline. And then guess what? With a thousand hours, you're probably one of the most junior captains, right? So you spent some time, we'll recap, you spent some time flying. You're probably flying, I don't know, 40 to 60 hours a month, mas o menos. And you're doing that. You'll have to do the math because I'm sitting here and doing a podcast. I can't do the math, but figure out how many months that is about to become a captain. And you've been there enough time that you've done 30 to 40 to 60, 70 hours a month. And you've gone ahead and built up a thousand hours of time. You're upgrading to captain. And that is the next step. The next step is becoming a captain. And this is where some of the airlines, some of the regional agreements with the majors start to diverge. There might be a time limit where they say, hey, I want you to have 2,000 hours of captain time at this airline. And after you have 2,000 hours, we will flow you to the major. Or maybe it's, hey, we flow a certain percentage each, each month. Maybe it's 14 people, maybe it's six people, whatever. And when your number comes up, you eventually flow to the major airline. And so it's the first one in is the first one out. So they've got people that have been there for years. And interestingly enough, you are going to probably fly with some captains that have been there an entire career. And those people, are they call them lifers. And they have had the opportunity to flow to the airline that you are dreaming about, but have chosen not to. And that is a whole nother conversation about life decisions on whether or not to flow to a major airline. And usually most of that has to do with circumstances like their age, their children's ages, as it was time to move on, the pay wasn't as good as it is now. And so they had to make some life decisions and it is what it is. So here you are, you're a first officer, you're an upgraded captain, you're making your hours, you're doing as much. So if you have an hour requirement, the faster you can get all your hours knocked out, the faster you're going to be at the major. If it's a time thing and you are happy to just sit there and let this time come, it's just it. You can bid reserve the entire time and barely fly. And I know people like that. I have some very good friends that have life circumstances that they don't much care. They don't need to get hungry and try hard to get to the major because they are going to get there eventually. I was hired by my regional in, I want to say, September or October of 2017. And my classmates, the ones that are still there that are waiting on the flow, are actually still there in 2024 and have not flowed up to the mainline carrier yet. And so that's a long time. 2017 to 2024 is a long time. It's a substantial time to be at a regional airline. And their life situations are such that they dig it and it's perfect for them. So that's where they are. They grow where they're planted. Now, you can certainly do that. And you can sit back and kind of ride the wave. And the threat here is this. When COVID happened, the airline that I was flying for, the major airline that owned the regional, decided that they were not taking any more flows. So they turned that nozzle off. And that airline is allowed to turn the nozzle off or turn the nozzle on as they see fit. There is no, no nothing, no matter how much... They think it's contractually obligated in there. The company has great, great leverage to take or turn away any of the people they want to do. And that happens sometimes. So you have to be aware that that's a threat. The other thing that happens is people want to get hired outside of the flow. Let's say you're flying for a regional and you're just really hoping to fly for the major for that company, but you're like, shoot, man, did I pigeonhole myself? because I decided to fly for the regional that is owned. Like, that was my thing. Like, I wanted to fly for the major that was owned by regional. Boy, that's tough to say. I wanted to fly for the major that owned my regional. And that was my thing. So I thought, like, okay, I've got to do all the things to do to be able to be pretty enough to get hired outside of the flow. 
And is that a thing? And it's a harder thing now than it was when I was hired. When I was hired, one of the big things was like, hey, you're just military and that's how you get hired outside the flow. But that's not the case anymore. Right now, it is much more difficult to get hired outside of the flow. And you need to consider a few things because if you're a person that's just has an application in, it's never going to happen. If you're trying to get hired outside of the flow with an application in, it's never, ever, ever, ever going to happen because they don't need you. They have enough applicants outside and it's just not going to happen. But there are things that you can do to make yourself more attractive to them. And a lot of that has to do with A, your extracurriculars, right? Extracurriculars are important. People that get involved with pilot recruiting, they are highly, highly sought after by the major airlines because they know that you give back, that you care, that you want to keep giving more than you're taking. And so I highly recommend people get into pilot recruiting. People that work in the chief pilot office, you have a lot of opportunity to get to know people at the major here and there a little more. And especially if you are sitting at an airport day in and day out, you are probably going to have some interactions with the major carrier chief pilot offices. And they have great leverage to bring you aboard if they so see fit. And then other things like anything you can do to kind of help support that company. Those are good things. Those are feathers in your cap. But you've got to get hungry and you've got to get in front of these people. Going to the hiring conventions is always a good idea. But if you're not a pilot recruiter at a hiring convention and you are trying to beat the flow, it's probably not going to work out. It's pretty difficult. And I'm sure somebody listening to this had other experiences, but you really need to find your niche where you can really stand out if you want to try to get hired outside of the flow. And the next thing you can do, really the only other thing that you can do is get out of there. Because if you are at a regional and you're trying to get to the major that owns that regional, then you have to get out of there so that they can pick you because they can't pick you because they don't want to steal from their own hive. Do you understand that? That is really important. They have a company that has to be profitable. They have to support it. They can't just suck all the pilots out from the regional airline because then the regional airline would fail and then that would have massive effects on the major. And you have to realize that it's just a business decision. And as much as you hate to hear it, it just is what it is. So they call it resume washing. And that is when you leave and maybe you go to a ULCC or maybe you're hired by a different major, but you're still targeting the other one. You want to go to Delta. And so you leave Endeavor to go to American or you leave to go to Spirit or Frontier or a legion or a part 135 or whatever it is just like just to get out of ownership of that regional carrier and once you're there you're free for the take and they are more likely to give you an opportunity to interview they're not more likely to take you but they're more likely to give you the opportunity for an interview and that is up to you not to mess up and so there's risk there there's risk that you have to decide whether or not it's worth it for you to move on. And if you go and you mess it up and you bungle that interview and you don't get hired by that airline that you were guaranteed a spot for when you were at the regional, you have to be willing to take that risk. And that is a big daddy risk. And you are going to have to step forward and go hard. If it doesn't work out, you're going to have to find a way to be happy at that ULCC or part 135 or the major where you didn't, you hadn't hoped to be. And that just is what it is. And it happens all the time. So if you take a calculated risk and want to wash your resume and move on to a different company, then you're taking a big chance. Decide if it's worth it. The spoils go to the victor and it's up to you. And that is really how you get hired outside of the flow. You can either do something extracurricular that's pretty narrow, has to do with like pilot recruiting, chief pilot office, that kind of stuff. And maybe you create a podcast and you are uh, real compelling and a lot of people listen to you and you are trying to move on. Well, you're going to build your network and you're going to know the people and you're going to have that opportunity. But if you don't have that network, 
then you only have a couple opportunities to really grow the chance to move on to that major of your dreams. So think about it. There's goodness in the regionals. There's some suckiness, but there's goodness. And if you want to beat the flow, then start off at the beginning, not going toward that company. Go away from that company. That's probably the easiest way to get to it by going away from it. It's counterintuitive. But if you take a cadet program at a different organization than the one you're really targeting, but you probably don't even know that when you're 17 or 18, you're just happy to be here. So yeah, man, I mean, just we're on a wild ride. It's good and that's okay. You don't want to think too much about it. All in all, once you're there, as long as the company's solvent, you're going to have a great career. So I want you to think about that and enjoy it. But I've been talking for like almost 25 minutes and I think it's important. I think it's really cool. I hope that you have a great experience as you're coming up through the regionals and know that once you get to the majors, it's just like the regional. Bigger planes, basically the same thing. You get paid more money. So if you don't like it then, (laughs) you're not going to like it later. So yeah, you guys are the best. I appreciate you listening. Give me a review. Go over there to the internets, to the Apple podcast, leave me a review. That's super helpful. You guys are the best. Have a great night and I'll catch you on the next episode. Hey, before I let you go, I need to mention one thing because a lot of people are asking me, can you do anything? Can you help me with this? And the answer is yes. At Spitfire Elite, we will make more millionaires this year than Major League Baseball will make in the next five years. Our company actually does this. It's called Spitfire Elite Interview Consulting. And you can find us over at SpitfireElite.com. Our clients, they call us the easy button for interview prep because everything you need to crush your interview is there in one spot. Whether it's application review or interview prep, all of it is covered. We've helped thousands of clients who are now flying at their dream jobs because our coaches gave them the one-on-one feedback that they needed to succeed on the biggest day of their life. The best part of Spitfire is our community. All Spitfire clients will get access to our private chats where they can work with each other and they can work with our coaches and get the latest information on all the airlines. If you'd like to make sure that you are 100% ready to go on your big day, there is only one choice. Everything you need is in one place and I think it's pretty affordable. You'll have to take a look for yourself. Just go over to SpitfireElite.com and check us out. Use the coupon code podcast and it'll save you 10%. And by the way, I will see you on the next episode. The statements made on this show are my own opinions and do not reflect, nor are they under any direction from my employer.